Most of the time, Animal Well is a quiet, ruminative Metroidvania. A simple, time-worn blob wanders a psychedelic subterranean labyrinth towards some obscure purpose, solving puzzles with a growing collection of tools. My cherished blob is neither armed nor dangerous, because whilst animals populate this murky realm, few are hungry for blobs. But in the rare cases, animals do take issue with my presence. The noise is terrifying. Shrieks pierce through the reverberant gloom with an exact Exaggeration matched only by the oversized animals themselves, whose limbs don't perambulate as much as they ooze across the screen. These encounters aren't usually difficult per se, but they are utterly stressful, cutting through the tomb-like tranquility with abrupt violence. The map scrawls in typical Metroidvania fashion, but once the objective sank in, I didn't get as lost as I did in Hollow Knight. While the puzzles can be taxing, they always clicked just on the threshold of tedium. Sometimes they involve setting Rube Goldberg-style systems into motion, or tricking friendly animals into doing my bidding, or discovering clever ways to use the items at my disposal. There's also some tricky platforming, which is at its best when it requires quick and smart use of Blobbo's tools. But the main game is far from the end. The credits rolling in Animal Well just marks the end of one game and the beginning of another. After moseying around the world for a few more hours post-credits, I was ready to close the game and start this review, until I found a certain shaped object that could fit into a certain shaped hole, which led me to a new region hiding a new tool that, no exaggeration, changed everything. Suddenly the map, which had grown static for me, became riddled with new opportunities. Every previous dead end needed to be reassessed. Animal Well morphed from a fun, verging, brilliant indie metroidvania into something that now keeps me awake at night. Still, it was when the game ended that I needed to take a more explorative approach when Animal Well's most annoying imperfection came to the fore. The map is woeful especially if you sit more than a meter away from your TV or monitor. Some areas are connected via chutes, basically a fast travel system, but these chutes are marked on the map with a single white pixel. This didn't matter as much during the main game, when movement around the world could be achieved on gut instinct, but when the aim shifts to discovering the hidden nooks and crannies left behind, the tool proves deficient. There is also a range of stamps that can be applied to the map as reminders, but these serve the opposite problem of being way too large. Animal Well is a puzzle game designed to keep players busy for up to a decade. Whilst finishing it will likely suffice for most players, it'll remain an ongoing mystery for its at this point theoretical online community just like Fez did over a decade ago. I can't see why it wouldn't attract a healthy community of sleuths considering the success of its pre-release ARGs and the fact that publisher Big Mode is a video game donkey concern, and not insignificantly that the game feels brilliant and moorish in the hands. It's rare for a game that hints towards fathomless depths to actually harbour them, especially when that game is under 50 megabytes. But Animal Well, like Fez, Spelunky, and Hollow Knight before it, feels like it could be a concern for years to come.